Welcome to the Vantage HR Influencers Podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Vantage Circle, the leading employee benefits and engagement platform. Hi everyone, this is Rohit from Vantage HR Influencers Podcast. And today I'm excited to have Mr. Srinath, who's a CHRO at Nextville in Infotech, uh, who has more than 20 years of work experience. And uh, in this session, we won't talk about how to secure the future of work uh, with HR technology. Uh, welcome to this session, uh, Srinath. Hey, thank you, Rohit. Thank you for having me on this uh, session. Uh, really excited to be part of this and, and share my experiences and the journey along. And also, uh, the future of HR is uh, what is the most exciting <laughs> in the days Correct. that we are in. Correct, absolutely. And uh, you know, before we started, I, w- I was uh, wanted to understand how did you get into HR and what got you excited to be uh, in in this uh, field. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Uh, uh, career in human resources wasn't that typical, you know, kind of destination in the 2000s when I passed out. And right. it was more of uh, IT, IT and more of IT. Uh, right. So in the grounds that I grew up, uh, the lanes of public sector ecosystem that Bangalore still carries, uh, you know, uh, we, we kind of grew up together, uh, started from the nurseries to the uh, graduation uh, together. So the right. collective base, games, festivals, fun, and also the sort of shares, not right. to forget, uh, pushed me early on, uh, unconsciously probably, towards the potential of a human possibility. And uh, this possibly early on laid the foundations for a career in HR, which which I did not uh, anticipate at that point of time. But then, yes, uh, to, to be more specific, um, HR or the human role that I uh, call it uh, is in the middle of the most compelling competitive battleground in business where companies deploy and fight over that most valuable talent, uh, which is the workforce talent. Um, I did not want to just be a post box of information exchange, but of doing work, which actually brings in the value across, uh, you know, marries the people's aspirations to the growth story. And and you have a part, vital part in, in a journey of a human being. I think that's what excited me in the uh, years, uh, though in the formatting years, uh, uh, you know, it was more of foundational uh, realizing the trivia one goes through and uh, feel distant from objectives tend to remain a headline of one's re- resume. But uh, as we move along, uh, I also, you know, uh, like any other profession, uh, we started seeing the forest and the environment and the faraway hills that come along. And, uh, you know, it shaped me in, uh, you know, the learnings that I had, the successes that uh, I could clock. Uh, this removed, uh, you know, from being a min- mere administrator uh, to value generator. So I think uh, to, to put it in a context, human resource is now a part of me. Uh, it is part of my senses and, and uh, I love the way that uh, I can uh, make a difference in, in the lives of people as we journey along. Uh, very, very nicely put, sir. And, uh, you know, I, uh, since we're talking about, uh, about how, you know, uh, HR, uh, is going to, is going to change the future of work. Uh, what, what new behaviors do you think will be required to succeed in future? You know, since we already in, in the midst of, of the, of a crisis, what do you think the new generation would need to develop some new behaviors to be able to succeed in future? Oh, yes. I, I call the, you know, uh, somewhere I got to read this. BCE and ACE before COVID emerged and after COVID enterprise, right? <laughs> so okay. uh, this paradigm of a new tribe of HR is emerging on the horizon. Uh, one who needs to understand and formulate the human potential and then put it into practice, a journey in facilitating that environment with the cultural strength, connect strength and capability strengths uh, to manage this transformation and all with an agility at the back of our minds because uh, an agile system is what is called for uh, as a human practice in these times uh, because the suddenly world has you know changed and it is it is now talked in every other forum uh, earlier i would say we were in few physical spaces constrained and limited by our uh, physical constraints in terms of having to go commute and then uh, you know do that work now it's suddenly each home is an office and the office is a space where you, uh, home is a space where you enjoy that uh, work that you carried on. And uh, that has, uh, you know, led to an era of imagination, which was already there, but it is now fully fledged. Uh, it has set in motion uh, the most capable tools to assist human imagination potential, possibly driven by HR. 
right? I say this because uh, we are at the forefront of this fight with a set of competent behavior that is essential to challenge, understand and adapt to the unknown uh, while still providing the sense of balance to business, uh, strategy on performance and these have to be in continuous uh, motion, right? So when I say that, uh, uh, just to give you a, a contextual example, we were, uh, you know, put behind not only by COVID, we also had Amphan hit us at our headquarters. Uh, so we had to literally um, do a BCP one after the other. And then that taught us like, you know, Black Swan is not just the thing that you read, but also experience, but not once, but twice again. <laughs> so uh, the human competency, the ability to adapt, to ability to think through these situations and emerge and also get your act fully uh, on. And we were within two days, we were fully functional, 100% uh, uptime and, and we never had to struggle again. So this taught us uh, more, uh, you know, on the ground uh, fundamentals, how we could rejig it and how business could still adapt uh, with a uh, human aspect to that, right? All of this has brought along the necessity of us having to align to the human frailty uh, of the environmental challenges that are thrown around us. Uh, so our tools have become sharper with this and more cognitive uh, to be able to augment talent that was unknown before, right? So today it is okay. unlocking in, in in more terms and in more ways that uh, I think this is also an era where uh, human ability is being challenged more fundamentally uh, with all these things around. I think uh, this will only get the best out of us uh, as humans. We we have survived what, like close to like uh, 10,000 years now as, as human beings. I think uh, after the dinosaur age and then the revolutions and the uh, industrial era, I think uh, in the age of imagination, we are still uh, fighting for those fundamental aspects of survival, livelihood. I think this teaches us how to be grounded more uh, to the core. Uh, so coming back to what are the essential behaviors to succeed in the future, I think learning to learn is underlined. Ability to adapt quickly is definite. Uh, complete each other in collaboration. I would say complete because competition has run its course now, right? right we are right. threatened on a survival and a livelihood basis. You cannot be competing in this moment. You have to be completing each other. I think this is more philosophical in terms of behavior. Uh, when you complete each other, you, you find that common ground and a path where you can actually uh, face these challenges head on. Uh, so I think th these are the three uh, important traits, uh, Rohit, if, if I can right. put that. Correct. Right. No, I, I absolutely agree about the collaboration because you, 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 you can't be in a competing mode. It's very important to collaborate uh, yeah. with, with each other. And, uh, you know, I wanted to uh, understand since we are all in, in a remote environment across the world, what key levels should be used to to building culture uh, in, in a, not only in a remote setup or a company which is which has been there for, for decades, but even for a new company, you know, what key levels should be there when you're looking to build culture in a company? Great question. I think uh, uh, anything called culture uh, is always uh, a little uh, said. Uh, it, it forms the entire core of, of a group, a talent, or an individual. Uh, culture for talent is in itself a talent for building that culture of every leader, right? Yeah. Culture expands, strategy focuses, and tactical abilities of us uh, providing the here and now wins in, in our progress. Uh, therefore, uh, uh, you know, uh, culture that respects trust and completes each other. I repeat that again and again, saying that completing each other wins uh, in a continuum environment with the challenges layers ahead on our path. Uh, now the HR construct to that is to be able to uh, enable activities that bind, bond and progress with impetus on completion, innovation and collaboration. Uh, the more we collaborate, the challenges get uh, tend to you know become lesser and lesser. The more we are trusting our individual self, uh, taking head on and not collaborating. We are, uh, you know, not actually resolving or solving the imminent threat that uh, it poses. So uh, to put a context again, um, what Nextwell did was we started a, a unique, uh, you know, uh, uh, exercise called Storians, where uh, this is a unique storytelling experience sharing platform 
for our employees to understand each other and celebrate points of success learn from our failures without the lens of punishments and adverse impacts followed through a failure which which creates the environment of fear i think this is fundamental to the way we grew our culture uh, we became a certified great place to work this year uh, with a unique set of practices uh, which underlies our cultural ethos of being human carrying and sharing more smiles smile is at the forefront of everything that we do and i i you know uh, have this single liner philosophy of more smiles per hour of work somebody asked me how do you measure it we said we don't measure it that's the beauty of it <laughs> as long as it is not you know measured it is more inherent in the way that we want to bring a smile on our employees and uh, they carry on with their work and and uh, we facilitate their growth their work and and uh, you see miracles almost on a daily basis in terms of uh, what we get as value in return and cohesion that we can generate as a cultural uh, unit uh, bound together uh, so this provided for a uniform experience transparency and trust uh, in 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 the basic deliverables that we have so people trust each other more bond better and uh, you know also create uh, that wow factor necessary another two Uh, with the technology assist that we were able to construct was uh, next ai uh, which which empowers end employees with their production and presence information right uh, earlier it was all uh, you know centralized and the employer uh, so to say consume that data more than the employee who was actually generating that data uh, when i say that so what we did was we uh, technologically drove this application so that we could nudge the employee to create a better uh, you know uh, accountability and be re- more responsible towards themselves using the nudge uh, you know uh, philosophy so with this i think uh, the employees have been empowered there is no micromanagement as such uh, so managers are happy uh, that the employees own up their uh, performance and their expectations uh, with the application which which presents that information to them at the end point Uh, so with this i think uh, we have now added more layers to that more science to it uh, and and uh, kind of integrated uh, the artificial intelligence which helps uh, understand their human be- behavior much better in a more scientific way and uh, create those transformative little pieces on a day to day basis so that it looks uh, huge uh, at the end of the day for us so just to give you a number we were able to drive about 20 25% efficiency gains once we implemented this uh, we did not allow the managers to uh, kind of monitor the data but we allowed the employees to own their data and be more responsible towards that i think that's uh, more where the culture spoke and allowed the alignment of uh, connect better in terms of being more responsible to the way that uh, we function i think that's that that was the biggest transformation uh, that that changed the way we worked and uh, you know underlined the key parts of the culture which which gets repeated and gets endorsed and also generates value for us interesting and you know since you talked about ai i wanted to wanted to understand what are the internal skills needed to build and integrate ai solutions and and do you think uh, you know ai could replace human workforce uh, ai replacing human workforce i you know i would say that uh, ai would definitely replace some of the tasks that have been carried out and also assist another human in performing a better task in a with a better complexity and better value generation ability uh, so uh, if you have to marry the culture part uh, to uh, intelligent decisions i think ai plays a very important role uh, we we need to demonstrate a winning proposition Uh, to enable this alignment uh, we did that with our employee insurance rewards i'll give you a couple of examples you know how we were able to integrate ai solutions we, it need not be complex it need not be uh, a you know set of people who know ai but at the end of the day the uh, the focus was to generate value in hr uh, so one was on the employee renewal uh, space insurance renewal space so every year we you know uh, for decades we have seen uh, the motions of uh, renewing insurance with some benefits uh, you know changed here and there and then that being consumed by the employee we wanted to make a difference here so we looked at the uh, wider uh, you know market and the available value proposition in terms of intelligence that could help us uh, we stuck up on um, you know ibm's watson we used our actual data to 
get some future uh, possibilities of uh, illnesses with lines of location and uh, age with that data we went back to the insurer uh, constructed a different contract uh, which helped us in terms of one uh, limiting the reputation of illness to taking preventive measures construed specifically for those pockets of people and three uh, reducing the cost overall uh, and deploying that cost elsewhere where we could you know make a difference in a different manner uh, all this while the insurer was happy uh, because they uh, had lesser uh, cases of illness for that year and henceforth we have made about 16 percent difference from the day we started uh, three years back to now in terms of uh, reducing our illness uh, ratios and uh, two we had uh, prescribed activities of awareness using ai to contain those pockets of people who were probably uh, getting ill or falling in a future model and uh, third one was you know the cost component where everybody was was quite happy the insurer you know renewing at a lower cost the employer paying less uh, so ai actually created uh, a differential so this we uh, we have been continuously using and and generating enough value and making a difference in the well-being of our employees I and mean, that is what matters so when uh, hr facilitates these the power of ai is unleashed at the end point of each employee i think after that what has happened is the next story was where we uh, started with the massive uh, program of moocs uh, all of them took courses in uh, artificial intelligence most of them took the basic course some of them got into rpa being a bpa uh, bpm company uh, which which processes uh, mortgage uh, line of business in the banking industry a lot of documentation rpa is necessary uh, robotic process process automation so we had people completing those and unleashing their individual bots at their workspace which transformed the way we skilled up our people and you know change the whole paradigm of how ai consume is consumed and also generating value for the company uh, just to give you the scale of moocs that we do uh, we were mandated you know pre 2016 uh, with a 40 hour you know per person per year uh, that got into three times four times the size and henceforth we have been <laughs> you know clocking more hours on learning which is which is actually helping us uh, with a lot of uh you know abilities that gets uh you know in in the collaboration space and the innovation space we were able to come up construct different products for ourselves and make a difference even in this covid era uh, we are one of the few companies in calcutta uh, who are hiring we just you know completed a ramp of about 120 people last week and we were also the highest job generator in the uh, last year as per STPI. So I think the uh, learning with an AI skill uh, has helped us. Uh, we have mandated across the board. Everybody has had a basic course in design thinking, has no. had a basic course in RPA, uh, has had a basic course in communication because we felt that what you learn needs to also be communicated in a way that it matters to the business in generating value i think uh, these are some of the things that i could uh, share with you rohit right. no that is very interesting that the company has also looked at ai as a, as a solution and uh, you know how should hr heads create a budget for for technology you know since uh vantage circle is a hr tech company uh, how how can hr uh, departments look at creating a budget so that technology can make life easier for them and for the company as well i think uh, uh, budget creation uh, for anybody uh, is, is more about a future direction we want to chart uh, in a world impacted by, by black swans especially right. now it is all the more important to draw our budgets towards more learning capabilities so that the competitive edge for today's building tomorrow remains the focus of knowledge edge right unless you have that edge you will not be able to uh, compete nor complete the way you could function in a better manner right knowledge is the true edge and right. your budgets for technology should enable that so that this makes uh, our lives easier um, uh, you know and and uh, coming to the technology budget budgeting alone uh, you know a tool in tech provides that multiplier effect so there is no uh, uh, you know a kind of argument which which says that you know investment in technology uh, does not help us in the long run but it does it gives 
uh, you know that focus it gives that scale only thing that one need to be cautious is uh, in our organization level of maturity at the current context what can uh, be a investment in incremental growth in technology or is it a zero based approach where i am investing on a certain capability which i don't have currently right um, today we have heard of uh, you know technology where you don't have to write codes you just have to right. give sentences which is called gpt3 and, yes. and then you know it converts itself into a code that is necessary and builds your website in a matter of time correct I mean, who, who could imagine these things yes, right absolutely. even for that uh, matter the rpa solution uh, you know so these are investments i think which will transform at least uh, if not the others the bpm space which which is a huge component in the indian landscape uh, business environment today i think most of us have invested in that and uh, trying to um, you know uh, change the way that things are done uh, at least the repetitive uh, monotonous tasks that were there which which we through uh, you know a lot of work and scale uh, just by hiring more people today that has uh, you know transforming so from a budgetary perspective i think you should always have a construct of uh, what can be uh, incremental beneficially in uh, beneficial in incremental ways and what can be in transformative ways and that is how you should chart because uh, there is also also the component of uncertainty hitting you know more so uh, in in the landscape so it is always important for an hr uh, hr head to invest enough in technology so that our people could do things which actually uh, really matters which is to uh, gauge the potential of our employees and help them aspire more vision grand and also enable that on the ground with local transformative steps so this is possible only when you have scale scale is gotten by technology and we should constantly be uh, mapping that out and uh, enabling it all right and uh, you know uh, in the same context i wanted to understand do you think there will be any role in hr which would get disrupted and you know how should companies be prepared for that so oh, definitely there there are multiple um, you know multiple aspects of uh, disruption in the life cycle management processes of uh, human resources uh, i would say an autonomous, autonomous hr is not far away uh, shared services the hire to retire uh, is presently being platformized so to say with ai and machine learning uh, that will take away the you know requirement for a resource to sit there and manage that process in full uh, therefore it isn't uh, you know very far that you find an hr presence in areas of operational hr questionable at times so um, uh, to just look at the uh, world currently recruitment is fully automatable with better tools Correct. hiring platforms you know why tech available for disruption Uh, so, what is interesting now is the zero proof knowledge systems that are emerging based on blockchain uh, you know beat a background check verification where i earlier need to share the data uh, from a previous uh, organization and ask for credential verification uh, today without that proof uh, a system can talk to each other and validate uh, without the person originating the request or the uh, term uh, request that is honored at the end point so that i think is good see a lot more maturity in the days to come by and uh, so the zero proof knowledge systems would evolve fully uh, not in the blockchain blockchain uh, mode but then uh, with also uh, performance systems getting integrated over a period of time especially now if you look at if you apply covid uh, scenario where it has uh, brought in the work from home to the forefront and almost more than 80 90% uh, that is where i think the uh, the uh, clogging of uh, the contract of employer to employee will uh, you know fully transform in the days and the component of skill will rule how the marriage takes place between the employee and a task and that will be enabled fully by technology so i think technology has a great role to play here and systems are emerging in that space we 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 did have uh, we still have uh, you know upwork and you know other portals which are offering gig as a uh, you know way of life however the best estimates were about 30% from the world economic forum report uh, that uh, two clock that about 2025 where you had gig but then uh, you know uh, post the ace <laughs> the emergence of technology has compelled us to look at it differently and see what can be 
uh, you know leveraged uh, so that the learning the potential uh, possibilities of a human uh, can be augmented to the fullest and um, uh, those things uh, would rule the roost uh, the roles of mundane repetitive task beat in hr beat anywhere else will right. go off fully uh, what will be remaining uh, i am not sure what it will be called because we are good at you know constructing names uh, but then uh, the task of human to human uh, enterprise where the connect happens where there is a human face that needs empathy where there it there is need for uh, you know putting the shoulder and walking together those things will remain in different forms uh, another thing that will remain is ability to uh, change the business the way uh, strategies of business uh, is conducted i say this because if we looked at 1900s in the industrial revolutions a component of machine to people was almost 70 30 right in ratio today it is almost 80 percent uh, people driven and 20 percent in in terms of machine driven so this means to say that the role of hr to manage and work uh, with people and and get the best out of that uh, requires a lot of skill set and hr is at the forefront of this uh, taking it by uh, you know uh, walking with the people and creating a culture where human enterprise truly can make that difference i think that is that is the role that will emerge in different forms and different names but i think another aspect i would see continuous uh, in continuing is uh, the ability to uh, structure learning right though we have a lot of uh, platforms in the tech space learning uh, and and uh, enabling learning will still need the human face uh, where it would uh, drive the behaviors it would drive the aspects of uh creating that edge in in our people interesting and, and you know how should hr head strategize to drive performance uh, and value through through technology great question uh, rohit i think with technology driving transformation long term sustainable value will only be created by unifying business and technology uh, to co create an exponential value for companies when i say this uh you know it takes that transparency a culture of collaboration and trust to be best achieved with technology assisting it because you cannot think of a system or a practice or a process uh which does not have technology underlying it be it in any vertical today in any business technology actually brings in its core strength of scale transparency and trust to its fore i think one cannot be doing anything without those things and i think it's a great uh, thing that technology strategies we are woven with the hr functions so that we underline that capability and build that capability to uh, every hr head needs to think how we could enable our technology to become more human as well in the sense uh, because what happens is the moment you apply too much of technology and take out the human face there uh, the uh, touch points and the ability to understand empathy the softer aspects of behaviors go away uh, we have seen a recent system where uh, which was deployed to assess uh, interviews in a question and questions used to pop up and uh, it used to face recognize the behavioral uh, you know face um, features and then uh, there were certain algorithms written uh, to understand that and interpret in certain way and you had a reject which was not qualified right you had a reject because the algorithm understood it differently and in connotated uh, uh, gray instead of a green so therefore i think uh, a human face is still required in some aspects uh, but technology will surely be there it will be there more and humans will uh, coexist to leverage that technology to better themselves and uh, is not only applies to hr but across humanity as such um, uh, performance uh, to say defined well performs well if it is not defined it doesn't whether it is with technology or not uh, technology always acts as a bridge with an audit uh, and and uh, it it nudges the system to continuously improve uh, i think that is where the technology layer is presently and it will evolve another thing it will also help us is uh, as uh, chros uh, is to enable a speed to the transformation right uh, whenever we want to construct anything uh, 
technology plays a great lever if without mooc i couldn't have imagined uh, 10 years back uh, you know how i we could do more than 40 hours 40 hours itself per person was a arduous task to enable a classroom environment of learning But today i don't even have to blink my eyelid it is done and yeah. and people are consuming more and more right and and uh, learning is at a pace where it was never seen before i think this is this is getting uh you know the force multiplier effect across the board and today people are more uh you know enthused that they have these options available uh, you have one more platform where uh, all the content that you consume gets uh, you know documented and indexed on a single platform and it is available to share and then you have a learning ecosystem playing each other in terms of what is the best that i could learn from this and that and there is so much more to do i think uh it it's the age of imagination has actually that imagination is opening up in terms of moocs in front of you on a daily basis if really one puts that learning hat uh technology can give you that you know strategic lever more and more on every single day i think uh, that that's how uh hr has to strategize Uh, to drive performance without technology i don't think you can you know do anything today correct absolutely right technology can can uh, can be a great leverage not only to uh, to help uh, your processes but also to acquire information and knowledge um chiran i quickly want to do the top three what's your favorite business book uh business book it's straight from the gut uh, jack welch uh, i think uh, what he said back then applies even today in terms of being candid authentic uh being uh, you know uh, truthful to what we do and also uh, have that force in you uh, to transform because nobody understands the transformation at the point where it is actually transformed so therefore you need that force and the uh, know how to be able to run through uh, systems and i think it still remains my best uh, you know red book another book i would quote is uh, uh, made in uh, made uh, made in sony by akio morita a autobiography of the founder of uh, sony i think amazing book for people management and uh, how uh, he was able to travel from uh, japan to us and without the knowledge of english and be able to construct a business empire uh, as big as sony corporation correct and uh, do you follow any hr leader ceo whom you know uh, listeners should also Uh, oh yes oh. i i there, there are a lot many gurus and thanks to technology today you could you could uh, access their wisdom on a daily basis on different platforms uh, i follow a lot of them i follow ns rajan i follow uh, you know uh, murthy garu i follow ashu i follow you know whole lot of them i mean i to take names would be disservice to their wisdom uh, i think there are a whole lot of them who who uh, continuously improve uh, me as a person and i i borrow heavily from their uh, wisdom on a day to day basis and try and adopt those in in my day to day life and uh, finally uh, is there any one piece of advice would you want to give to uh, young uh, hr hr leaders and obviously uh, you know a uh, lot of graduates are uh, graduating out of out of uh, college and they want to get into hr uh, so during this tough time you know what what is one piece of advice you would, would you want to give uh, which would really help them going forward oh yes never never fear about your imperfections those are the places that opportunities can be driven i think that's one piece of advice i want to tell every you know young guy who starts uh, never worry about your imperfections because that is the place where we can have the biggest opportunity in improvement and change ourselves i think those are designed that way by by the divine so that we could leverage ourselves better and reconstruct that part in a better manner uh, uh, richna what is basically people can reach out to you and know more about you uh, i am uh, you know more available on um, all social platforms linkedin twitter uh, and and uh, by email uh, we can reach out at uh, shrinath.g at nextwell.com that's my email id and uh, shrinath agatse on twitter and then uh, on linkedin shrinath guru raja rao all right we will put that in the show notes uh, thank you so much for taking our time this was a very insightful session where we we talked about uh, you know how the future work will change with hr technology thank you so thank, much thank you so much it was a pleasure talking to you and thanks to vantage best wishes thanks for listening to vantage hr influencers podcast is do subscribe to vantage hr influencers podcast on apple podcast and spotify for new episodes